thing in the basement of Welsh Hall all night. Yeah. And I worked all night. And of course then I was too tired to attend the parade. <laughs> Here's a picture of the float. And that was homecoming from 57. what year? 57. Mm -hmm. okay. They were still in Welsh. And this is the honors convocation that's unrelated to theater. Here's my Kappa Delta Pi chapter. It's an educational honorary. I was inducted in that. Here's the Alpha Psi Omega plaque. May 15th, 1958. Signed by Joan Wegley and George Bird and then the National Officer. And here's the Broadcasting Guild with some clippings. Now, uh, when you were a student here, what was, um, when players would do the end of the year banquet, what did that look like? Well, I think originally we did them at the uh, Huron Hotel. It was still functioning as a real hotel. <laughs> Later on it functioned as a hotel, but not the kind you would want to stay at, mm -hmm. <laughs> as I understand it. Right. Uh, but you had an MC, and and you had various people making presentations, saying, "Well, here's the best actress award," and they would open an envelope, and and there was usually comic stuff. Uh, as I said, I got the fake telegram. Another year, uh, the year I did the dance, well, they they had a picture of a dancer <laughs> with with a caption, which was done in fun, of course. And and so and and the meal was usually pretty good and, and everybody attended. They tried to, um, and we get all of the people who participated in it. And we had you know a lot of people uh, who did a lot of work. There were some people who didn't get in very many shows, but they worked on every show. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and it was great fun to do the shows. It was a great experience to uh, to act on that stage mm -hmm. with with the directors we had. Uh, I did most of the shows with George Bird or Bill Wirth, and I I didn't work with Bill Holsoppel, but and I let's just say. I, I, I co-headed props for the show, and I didn't really care for the way he was working. And I could I didn't see much until we got near the production, but I I didn't. He was running rehearsals very late, and when he did Tea House, they had a minor a technical rehearsal. They had a minor problem, had to stop, and it was already one ten. A.M. Wow. and he took a coffee break. Wow. <laughs> that kind of thing. <clears throat> was there any regulation at that time for how rehearsals were structured? I mean, could they just have rehearsals any time they wanted? Just keep. Well, seeing? I think the directors pretty much did their own thing. <clears throat> uh, I do remember one of the dress rehearsals for the Crucible ran pretty late too. And, and I recall Bill Work giving us notes in the lounge. Now it's the foyer of the theater. It wasn't a, it was just a lounge at that time. <clears throat> and it was like 1.20 in the morning. And his final comment to us, well now go home and get some rest and keep up your schoolwork. <laughs> and I thought, if it's 1.20 you're not going to be able to do either one of those. Yeah. And it taught me as a director to be very aware, particularly in the college scene, very aware of students' time. So when I directed at Defiance College, as I did for 17 years, I usually started my rehearsals at 7 o'clock in the evening and quit at 9 or 5 minutes after, and I did not take a break. Because breaks, 10 minute breaks tend to end up being 20 minute breaks and people lose focus, so I rehearsed for two hours and they could go home at nine o'clock. And I thought, and I did the same thing in high school. I, I would try to get it done as quickly as possible. <clears throat> I, I teched a show at uh, Defiance College for the choir director who was directing two by two, 
and usually